Believe it or not, console is more than just console.log, and we're gonna cover six different functions you can use to make your lives easier as developers. So the first one is console.count. And when it's called, it will do what it says. It will just count up and increment a number so you can know how many times some code has been run. But if you pass in a label like click, it will output the same thing but with a label so that you can have much, a bunch of them and tell them apart. The next thing is table. So if we look at this data here, commands, it's an array of objects of the commands we're going to cover today. So if I were to console.log the commands, we get the standard uh, JSON output where we have to expand it and look at the data this way. But if we switch this to console.table, we get it in a nicely formatted table. And if there's too many columns that we don't wanna see, we can pass an array of columns that we want to include, and then it will only output those. Next, we have console.assert. And what this will do is basically freak out as soon as a condition is false. So we'll say we want the count to be less than two. Whoa, there, buddy. So as soon as that is false, one, two, three, there we go. Whoa, there, buddy, outputs. Um, basically to let us know, hey, this assertion failed. The next one is time. So if you want to figure out how long it takes your code to execute, you can wrap that code inside of console.time. So I'll show you how it works, but first I'm just going to write a quick function um, that will basically iterate through all of the DOM nodes and find the one with the most number of children. So we'll call this um, function the max children. And what it's going to do is basically return, and then we're gonna say document.query selector all. So we're gonna start off with all of the nodes, and then we're going to reduce them. Reduce is like my, my favorite function. So it's gonna be an arrow function, and our starting value, we'll just start with the body, and it will be replaced as soon as it finds one with um, more children. So with reduce, we always receive two values. The first is sort of our accumulator or our value that we're passing from one call to the next. So this will we'll call it the max, and then we have the current DOM node that we're iterating over. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say if the current children.length is greater than the max children.length then we're going to return the current, otherwise it's still the max. So if I console.log this max children like this, what we're gonna see is that the head element has the biggest number of children, which are three, these tags here. So we found it, but how long does it take this code to run? So we say console.time, so this would be max, we'll give it a label, and then we say console.time end to stop timing. So we run our code and screwed something up. Oh, I know. You got to give this a label too. Oops. There we go. So it took this max code half of a millisecond to run. So we can run it a few times and it will output that. So you got to give labels to both the time and the time end for it to work correctly. So next we got group, grouping information together hierarchically. And we're gonna create another function here where we basically iterate over the DOM tree and we're gonna output all of the, the DOM nodes. So we're gonna call this function the tree and it is going to take in the node like this. So we're gonna call tree and we're gonna pass the document to it and what this is going to do to start is just console.log the node dot, um, I think it's called node name. So if I output this, so we start with our document. Now we're going to iterate over. Um, so we're just gonna say dot, 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 node dot children, and then we're gonna for each those. So the child, and then we're gonna recursively call the tree function with this child. So if we were to output this here, here are all of the elements on the page, but you don't know what belongs to what. They're just in a straight line. So if we change the console.log to group, 
and then we pass in the label which will be our group name and then we go below where we show its children and we say group end so here you don't pass another label in like you do with time up here so now we're going to run this code and now see how it groups everything together and you can like close the head close the body and we just output a nice tree structure using console.group so the last thing I want to do is trace. So we're going to trace this max child function or max children function. And what trace does, so we're going to come up here, it basically shows you the call stack of where you are, how you ended up in this piece of code. So if we say console.trace, and then we just make sure we're actually calling this function again, it's going to output the call stack. And it's going to say, okay, you're inside of Max Children. How did you get here? You got here via the onClick function, which was called in the call callback, which is called in a whole bunch of things. I don't know if these are from the browser or from React, but it will tell you how you ended up where you are inside of this function. So it's really good for debugging. And you can use all these together to debug a lot easier than just using console.log alone. Hope you like this video. Take care. Bye.